Hello there! In this tutorial, we're gonna make a simple bullet hell game for Godot. It will include a bullet, a bullet spawner, and a player. If you like what you see, let's get started. So as you can see, I created a new uh, Godot GLES3 project. I actually already imported some assets. I imported a circle um, PNG, a uh, square PNG, and a bullet spawner script that I'll explain later in the process. So let's get started. We can't have a bullet hell without a bullet, so let's create that first. I'm gonna make a new folder, and this is gonna hold our bullet and everything that we need in it. I'm gonna go ahead and make a bullet scene, and I'm also gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make this a 2D scene, save that. I'm also gonna go ahead and make a bullet script. I'm gonna go ahead, attach a child node to our scene, uh, add an area 2D, make this area 2D the root, delete this extra node 2D. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a sprite. I'm gonna take our circle.png. I'm gonna scale this down a bit. That's good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and recolor that so it's clear that this, this item does damage. I'm gonna go ahead and add our collision. So a collision shape 2D. I'm gonna go ahead, make this a circle shape and scale this circle shape down. Great, we should be good to go. I'm just gonna quickly attach our script, bullet.gd. Let's go to our bullet.gd script. So first we're gonna make this extend area 2D since um, this is uh, area 2D. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this, this scene here to bullet. Rename this scene to bullet. There we go. But yeah. Okay, so we wanna make some variables here. So we want to export a variable called speed. Let's set this to maybe 200. We want to export a, um, a variable called lifetime, which is how long our bullet actually lasts. And, and we're going to use our process function to actually edit the bullet. We're going to use our process function for that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, add a vector to our position. And this vector is actually going to be the velocity. And we're going to get this velocity from the rotation. The rotation is not here in the export variables. However, it is included by default in the node settings in transform. As you can see, our rotation degree is right here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get the cosine of the rotation, basically the x of a rotation, the x vector. And I'm going to get the sine of our rotation. And actually, we don't need to do, we don't need to convert this to degrees since this value actually gives us the rotation in degrees. Um, if I wanted to use rotation degrees, I would do rotation degrees and then times this by pi, divide that by 180. But we're not using degrees, we're using radians. So we're actually fine. And also, since this is Godot, the y value is actually inverted. So I want to actually make this a negative sign. And now if we go to test our bullet, Let's say we want our rotation to be negative 45 degrees. Look at that. It heads this direction, negative 45 degrees. So now, after a certain amount of time, we want our bullet to despawn. So we will actually want to destroy itself. We do not need to worry about pooling because Godot actually um, has instantiating and destroying objects as efficient as it already can. So we actually don't need pooling. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a timer here. I'm going to add a child node called this timer. I'm going to go ahead and, um, get the child timer. I'm going to start it with our lifetime variable. And then I'm going to go ahead to our timer and I'm actually going to go and get, um, and get a signal called timeout. And on timeout, connect that to our bullet script and boom. And now on timer timeout. We know that the, the amount of uh, time has actually passed, so we can actually just destroy the object. We can do that by doing Q free. There we go. So, for example, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one second to test it. You should probably do more as much as um, you need. After one second, our bullet is destroyed, as you can see right there. 
If you want, I can actually show up more using um, this. Yep, it's destroyed after one second. Uh-huh, perfect. Oh, and I forgot, I forgot to add our speed and our lifetime. Speed times delta. So you actually want to multiply this vector by speed times delta. So there we go. After one second, it's destroyed. I'm going to set this back to 10 or 5 or whatever you want. And now we have a rotation aspect of our bullet done. But what if we don't want to use rotation and we want to feed in a hard-coded velocity value instead? In the case, all we have to do is uh, make a new variable called velocity. And I'll just have this be a new vector too. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add... Uh, identifiers to these variables identifiers. and we're also going to have a variable called bool use velocity and this boolean is going to determine whether or not we should use velocity or if we should use rotation so true use velocity if false use rotation all right uh so we can actually just use an if statement, and if use velocity, then we want to add our velocity to our position times the speed and times the delta, the delta time. And then else, we want to use our rotation. So now if we go back to our bullet class, and I change the velocity. Set this to on. Boom! It goes in this direction. And actually, if you want to be more specific, you can normalize this velocity. So that's more accurate. And that you don't have strifing. There we go. Perfect. All right, now that we have our bullet class done, let's actually go to our bullet spawner. So now that we have our bullet, let's actually move on to our bullet spawner that spawns the bullets. Uh, I have a script already imported here. I'm going to explain this as I move along. Uh, you can uh, write down the code as I explain it. Um, first, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I accidentally did that. First, I'm going to go ahead and add a scene to bullet spawner uh, to the, the folder. I'm going to go ahead and make this a 2D scene. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to bullet spawner. And then I'm going to add a child node. No, I'm, no, I'm going to add a attach a script. And I'm just going to connect that script. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add a timer, actually. And then I'm going to connect this timer with our node here. With our signal, timer, timeout. I'm going to connect this to our bullet spawner. And that way, this function here is connected. And so we can actually spawn bullets. So, now I'm going to actually explain all this. So, it basically extends a Node 2D, your typical Node 2D. It, 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 um, this bullet scene is basically the scene that we're going to use. To... So, this scene is basically the scene that we're going to use to instantiate or spawn in the bullet. Um, this is our min rotation, our max rotation. And our bullet's rotation is going to be somewhere between our min and our max. Um... This is basically the amount of bullets that we're going to spawn in. Um, I'll explain this later. Um, this is basically whether or not the bullet is parented to our object. And this is whether or not the bullet is spawning is manual or automatically. If it's automatically, then the timer is actually going to handle it with its spawn rate. And if it's manual, then we're actually going to have to spawn it from a different script or extend this script here. Spawn rate is how fast the bullet's going to spawn if it's spawning automatically. Bullet speed is basically the speed of the bullet. Bullet velocity is the velocity. Bullet lifetime is the lifetime. And whether or not the bullet uses uses the velocity. Actually, all these variables are basically um, the same variables that we have in our bullet script. And these are actually set to our bullet script when our bullet is instantiated. This is basically an array of our rotations. And this is whether or not we want to lock the console or not. 
So on start, I basically set our timer wait time to our spawn rate, and then I start the timer. Um, so, and then basically, when our timer times out, or when our timer reaches, you know, uh, when our timer runs out, then if it's automatic, or if it's not manual, then we want to spawn our bullets. And here we actually spawn our bullets. So if the bullet spawning is random, like this is a boolean here, then we want random rotations, else we want distributed rotations, and all these are functions. I'm going to go ahead and explain these functions now. So, um, if it's random, we have random rotations. Random rotations are basically spread out randomly. They are basically uneven. How it works is we basically create a random number gen generator from min rotation to max rotation. Um, and we basically append that to the list for each of our bullets here. Because we have a for loop. Now, what if we don't want randomly? Well, then we use distributed rotations. Distributed rotations basically gets an even distribution of rotations across min rotation and max rotation for each bullet that we spawn in. So if our min rotation is equal to 0 and our max is equal to 360, we will get 0, 45, 90, 135, 180, all the way up to, three, all the way up to 315. So how it works is for each of our bullets, we want to get a fraction from 0 to 1, and we actually do this here. 0 is closer to our min, and 1 is closer to our max rotation. We get the difference of our min and our max, and then we get a fraction of the difference by multiplying these fra by multiplying these two. And then we apply back our min rotation, we add it back, so that way we can actually cancel everything out. And actually, this is basically alert function. Literally, it's actually alert function. Um, so basically, the fraction, basically, depending on what this fraction value, depends on whether or not it will be closer to min or max rotation. So this is basically alert. Um, we do this for each of our bullets. So basically, for each of our bullets, we want to instantiate a bullet, so we instantiate our scene, we instance that scene, and then we add the bullet to our array here, spawn bullets, and then parenting. So if the bullet is parent, then we add the child, add this bullet as a child of this node here, of our bullet spawner node, else we get the root node and we add the child to our root node. And then remember when I mentioned applying fields? We actually apply these fields now. So we basically set our rotation degrees because this is in, this is in degrees. Uh, we set that to our uh, rotation that we generated from these scripts. So we actually generate uh, the rotations in these scripts and we apply them here. Then we set our bullet speed, our velocity, global position, use velocity, lifetime, and other fields that we might need on our bullets. Then we return the spawn bullets. And actually, I'm going to go ahead back to our 2D scene. I'm going to just set our bullet scene, load our pack scene here, bullet scene, uh, set our min max, um, uh, I want this to be automatic, so we're going to leave this off. We don't want to be manual. No manual. Um, I'm going to set this to something greater. And we don't want to use, we actually want to use rotations, not velocities. So we're going to set this to off. So we're not using velocity. And there you go. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and actually bring this clip in the middle of the scene. So you have a better visualization of everything. And boom. Our bullets are spawning are spawning distributed evenly across um, zero to three hundred and sixty. Actually, if we want randomly instead, if we want to be random, we can do this. Boom! Random rotations, and you can instantly customize this. So, actually, if we want it to be some, like, you know, 45 to 180, so it's actually going to spawn on this side.
boom, it spawns randomly from uh, 45 to 180. And so this looks better. I'm going to avoid using random rotations. I'm going to use distributed rotations. And boom, we have a nice uh, spray of bullets here on this side. And I can basically customize this however I would like to. If we want to, we can make our our bullet, we can actually make it, um, we can actually make our bullet uh, faster. So we can actually do 500. Look, if we want minigun style, we can do 400. If you want a minigun, we can make this a bit smaller, spawn rate, and then boom. Like, and now it just acts like a minigun, pretty much. Yeah, now it just acts like a minigun. So, yeah. Alright, so now that we have our bullet spawner, let's actually move on to improving the system and adding more onto the system. Um, yeah. Alright, so we have our bullet and we have our bullet spawner. However, we don't have our player. And without our player, we do actually do not have a game. So let's add our player. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead, um, I'm gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna make a script called player.gd. I'm gonna make a scene called player. And this player is gonna be a 2D scene. I'm gonna make this player a kinematic body 2D. Then I'm going to go ahead and make this the roots. I'm going to delete the extra node that we do not need. And I'm going to add a sprite. I'm going to attach, I'm going to attach a square sprite or whatever sprite that you want to attach to your um, player. I'm going to go ahead and scale this real quick. Then I'm going to go and add a coll collision shape 2D. I'm going to go to the shape. I'm going to make this a rectangle shape 2D. And then I'm going to go to the animation player. So that way we can make an animation when the player gets hit. I'm going to make a new animation for when the player gets hit. And when the player gets hit, I want to modify the color property of the sprite. So I'm going to go to the sprite. And I'm going to do modulate. Because modulate is the color. I'm going to insert a key. And I'm going to make this red. And then I'm going to insert another key. Make this white. And therefore, this is going to last for 0 0.5 seconds. Therefore, our player cooldown is going to be 0 0.5 seconds. So our player is going to get hit, and then our player is unable to get hit until the, until the animation reaches this point. Now that we have added all the nodes that we need, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to player. Now that we add all the nodes that we need, let's go ahead and add our script, attach our script. I'm going to attach the player script, and I'm going to make this extend area 2D. All right, now let's add all the variables that we will need for our script. I'm going to add a speed variable. Um, this is self-explanatory. It's basically the amount of speed for our player. Um, I'm going to add our start HP, and I'm also, which is basically the HP at the start. And then I'm going to add uh, on ready variable for HP, which is basically the current HP at any given moment. I'm going to make a variable for whether or not the player can actually take damage. And I'm also going to uh, make a variable to hold our animation player node that is here. Um, I'm going to make uh, some variables for clamping our player to the window. So if we want to clamp our player to the window borders, then we actually... Um, clamp it to the width and the height. Actually, I'm going to replace these real quickly. And these are basically the window borders. And you can actually get these settings by going to Project Settings and Display, Window, Size, Width, and Height. And those directly correspond with the project settings. I will elaborate on that later. Um, we pretty much have everything, so let's go ahead and make a function for our physics process. All right, so let's handle our input. So I'm going to handle uh, moving. I'm going to make a new variable called velocity. And this is going to derive or extend from a vector 2. 
And I'm going to control the X. So if we want to move our player left and right, what we want to do is we want to use these input functions. Then we can also make our player move on the Y axis by controlling our velocity Y. And then we can normalize our velocity so that way our player cannot strafe diagonally. So we normalize that. So the player is constantly moving in the same direction, even when the player is moving diagonally. And then we use a physics function called move and slide to move our player along the velocity. Also, I'm sorry about that. I need to make this extend the kinematic body 2D and there, that will correct itself. So now we have the entirety of our input done. Now we can clamp our function, our position. So if we clamp the player to our screen borders, then we will pass, uh, we will pass a clamp value to our position X. And we'll make sure our position X is between zero and the width of our window. And the same for our position Y, we'll make sure it's between, between zero and our window height. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and make this global position, since that's going to be way more accurate. I'm going to use global position. I'm just going to add that to each one now. And that's probably going to be a bit more accurate. Okay, so we can move, but our, we also need to make sure we can also take damage. So I'm going to go ahead. We have a function for taking damage. So if the player can take damage, then we're going to decrease our HP. And then we're going to run our animation player dot play hits the same animation that we made earlier here in our animation player. We're going to play that and then we're going to set can take damage to false, which basically means that the player cannot take damage until this animation is complete. However, we need to set this to true at some point. And how we'll do this is we're going to use our animation player, we're going to go to our node, we're going to use a signal, and we're going to do on animation finished. And on animation finished, this will be true again. So what we can do is if the animation name is hit, can take damage is true, and then in the case our HP is zero, we'll just run our game over sequence. You can put whatever game over code you want here. Anything that relates to game over, you can just do that right here. Um, actually, I'm just going to put a note called game over. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. And to make sure that our player is able to interact with the bullets, I'm going to go to our, bullet, uh, our bullets here. And I'm going to go ahead and use another signal in our bullet on body entered. Um, I'm going to disconnect that. Well, yeah, we want to use on body entered, connect that to our bullet, and then if the body name is player, then we'll just make that body take damage. So if it's the player, then we make the player take damage because the player hit the bullet. Um, yep. Everything should be done now. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick scene. One for game. One for our game, and one for game over. Um, for our game, I'm just going to add our bullet spawner here. Our bullet spawner scene. And then I'm going to add our player. I'm going to play this, and we can actually take damage. We have our bullet spawner spawning bullets, so we can actually dodge the bullets if we so choose to, though it's very difficult. Probably should make the player speed a bit faster. And if we die three times, then, well, we go to our game over scene. So yeah, everything's pretty much done. We have all our logic. Um, I'm going to increase my player speed. Make this not a child of Bullet Spawner. And go ahead and do that. There we go. And now, yeah, our player can move a lot faster. Our player can probably dodge bullets a bit easier. Yep. Pretty much. That's And that's pretty much it. We basically have a minimal viable product of our Bullet Hell game. 
you can add a lot more stuff to this. You can modify this however you would like. But yeah, that's pretty much the base base of a bullet hell game. Actually, if you want to add more variety, what we can do is we can make an export. We can make a variable for our rotation offset for our bullet. So if we want a spiral, more like um, we can make a rotation change variable here and make it so that the rotation change, the rotation changes by rotation change times delta. And I'm gonna pass in rotation degrees because this is in rotation degrees. Um, and now, if we set our bullet, if we go on our bullet resource, if we go on our bullet resource here, um, and we set our bullet resource to rotation changes like 45 degrees, head back to our game. Instantly, we have our bullets spiraling because the bullet rotation is changing each frame. Oh, and they also come back. So if you don't want the bullets to come back like that, you're gonna need the bullet lifetime to be way shorter. If we go to our bullet scene and we set, let me set, um, let me set the lifetime to like three or four. And there we go. Yeah, our bullets are not gonna come back. Um, so you have to set the lifetime from the bullet here and not, the, yeah. But yeah, you can pretty much um, experiment with this however you would like, and make whatever game you'd like. Um, in order to fully take advantage of the system, you probably want to use more Godot. Sorry that I wasn't able to add as much content into this tutorial as I wanted to. The Bullet Hell Gem is coming up, and I have to finish this video before then. If the Bullet Hell Gem hasn't ended yet, you may want to consider joining. It's starting soon as of releasing this video. Hopefully, I'll be able to release a follow-up tutorial on how to extend this Bullet Hell system. If you don't want to miss it, you might want to consider subscribing. Source code will be available in the description of this video. If you need help, you're welcome to join my Discord where I can help you out. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you're able to to learn something. Bye!